stop shooting on manual. I'll tell you why. You know, in the beginning, it's always been shoot on manual. You have to have manual focus and manual settings. Everything manual, 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 because that's the only way you learn. The reality is cameras have become way too good at doing some of these things and we can't keep up. You can't keep up when it comes to autofocus. If you're trying to focus on something that's happening fast, you can't, with your hand-eye coordination, make that focus happen. It's just too hard. So let's take a look at several different scenarios where I'm using an auto mode on my camera and why I'm using it. But remember this, I will only put one aspect of the exposure triangle on auto at any one time. So if I'm going to let the camera choose my shutter, I'm going to choose my aperture and my ISO. If I'm going to let my camera choose my ISO, I'm going to choose my shutter and my aperture. I will only put one aspect of the exposure triangle on auto at any one given time. I'm never going to turn two of those over to the camera. Now you really don't have creative control of your images. So here's scenario number one. First scenario is street portraits. I always use aperture priority when I shoot street portraits because I want my aperture to be pretty wide open so the background falls way out of focus. I'm going to set my ISO at 100 and I'm going to just let the shutter be what the shutter wants to be. It just makes it really quick for me to get a good shot of someone. I was shooting a portrait, tight shot of a person, and I looked a little across the way and there was a person crossing the street. I quickly aimed, focused, shot, and I got a great image of somebody crossing the street. I could never have done that fast enough to catch them before they got across the street if I was trying to set my shutter. Street portraits are about catching the moment and what's going on in the person's life, so you want to be able to shoot quickly and not miss that moment. So shooting in aperture priority allows you to get that quickly and to be able to change quickly to another setup. So aperture priority for street portraits. Another scenario where I love to use aperture priority is when the sun's going down and I'm trying to follow the sun into dark. I'm gonna want longer and longer exposures and it's just easy to put it on aperture priority. I use 100 ISO and then I let the shutter get longer and longer as it gets darker and darker. I'm looking at the images as I go and I may change the compensation dial if it's looking too bright or too dark just to give myself some options. A lot of times I will set that compensation dial at plus two thirds it just kind of opens the image up a little bit and I like the look of it. But again, I'm only letting the camera control one of the three aspects of the exposure triangle. It's controlling the shutter, allow it to get longer and longer and longer to be able to give me images in the night. Next setup is sports photography. When I sat with Nick Didlick, we were shooting soccer at night. And he goes, look, you just gotta set your aperture at whatever aperture you want. He goes, how much do you want to be in focus back there? And I said, not very much. He goes, well, open up your aperture. Give it a 2.8, give it a 3, 5, you know, give yourself something wide open. But then you've got to stop the action. So set your shutter at 1 4,000th of a second. I said, what do I do with the ISO? Put it on auto. So that's exactly how I shot it. My camera's in manual mode, but I set the ISO on auto. So now I'm at 2.8, 1 4,000th of a second, and I'm going to let the ISO do what it has to do in that arena as I change and as I shoot and as I move and follow the action. I said, well, I'm afraid they're gonna be too grainy. He goes, well, you can have them be too grainy or you can just not have them be in focus. You have to decide. So I let the ISO do what it had to do. So I'm only letting one, one aspect of the exposure triangle control itself. And I let it be the ISO when I'm doing sports photography. Next is wildlife. If I'm shooting bighorn sheep in the Valley of Fire, I'm gonna be on aperture priority because I want the background to fall out of focus. And then I'm gonna set my ISO at 100 because I want a clean image then I'm gonna let my shutter do what the shutter has to do to get the shot. I shoot that way almost every time I've shot animals because they're moving and you gotta, you're trying to keep up with them. Oh, there's a great shot over there. There's a great shot there. You're changing all the time. So it just becomes too hard. It's too slow to be able to use a manual settings to be able to get your shutter and aperture and it'll get a shot before they change and leave. So when I photograph animals, I'm usually in aperture priority unless I want to freeze the action. Then I go to manual so I can choose my aperture and my shutter, shallow depth of field, stop the action, and then I go to auto ISO. If I'm shooting birds, hummingbirds, now I can follow the birds, I can frame and I can shoot, and that auto ISO is gonna let me reframe and shoot quickly to stay with the birds. When I shot horse racing, I'm trying to stay on those horses and the background's changing, it's going all over the place, it's getting darker, brighter, but it allows me to stay with it and shoot, 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 and the auto ISO will just give me a correct exposure every time. So if I got motion with the animals and I'm trying to freeze that motion, then I'll go to manual. I can choose my shutter to stop that motion. I can use my aperture to give me more or less depth of field. And then let the auto ISO give me the correct exposure as I change in frame and shoot. Last scenario, I'm walking around New York City and I'm just enjoying the day. And I'm going, you know what? I don't want to think about this. I want to just take pictures and have a good time. So I just set my camera on aperture priority 3.5 or 4, and I just shoot, enjoy the day, and I don't have to think. 
So sometimes it just allows you to frame and shoot and enjoy the day and not have to think. And that can be a good thing too. So to wrap this up, stop shooting on manual all the time because there are situations where an automatic mode on your camera is gonna give you a quick, fast, and amazing result. So when do I shoot entirely on manual? when I want complete control of the situation and I have complete control of the situation. If I'm in the studio with strobes, I'm on manual, everything, because I have complete control there. Things aren't happening super fast. I can stay up with it. I can focus, I can shoot. It works perfectly. Outside the strobes, I want to be on manual because I'll match the power of my strobes to my aperture and then I'll drag or shorten my shutter to give me the ambient I want to make the image look good. So I've got to have complete control in that situation of my aperture, shutter, and ISO. Even if I'm using a speed light, it never makes sense to use a TTL speed light when you're not on manual. You get the best exposure for the situation and that TTL is gonna give you a little flash to fill it in. But the minute those strobes go away and I'm trying to shoot fast, I'm almost always on some kind of a priority mode on my camera. So remember the rule of thumb is never let your camera control more than one of the exposure triangle. As long as you control two of the exposure triangle, you will always be in control of the creative process and you'll get the images that you creatively want to get. So if you're confused by any of the terms we've used here today, aperture and shutter and compensation, all that, check out videos we've got here on the Slant Lens that teach us about shutter and aperture, help us to understand those completely so you have a foundation to be able to control those both in a manual mode and in a priority mode. So there's lots of ways to connect us with us here on the Slant Lens, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, so make sure you keep those cameras rolling and keep on clicking.